Do you want to know who you are? Don't ask. Act. Action will delineate and define you. I predict future happiness for Americans, if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Honesty is the first chapter of the book Wisdom. The legitimate powers of government extend to such acts only as are injurious to others. It does me no injury for my neighbor to say there are twenty gods or no god. It neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. The man who reads nothing at all is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. I sincerely believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies, and that the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity, under the name of funding, is but swindling futurity on a large scale. On matters of style, swim with the current, on matters of principle, stand like a rock. The most valuable of all talents is that of never using two words when one will do. I'm a greater believer in luck, and I find the harder I work the more I have of it. We in America do not have government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. I would rather be exposed to the inconveniences attending too much liberty than to those attending too small a degree of it. Our civil rights have no dependence on our religious opinions any more than our opinions in physics or geometry. History, in general, only informs us what bad government is. I have observed, indeed, generally, that while in Protestant countries the defections from the Platonic Christianity of the priests is to deism, in Catholic countries they are to atheism. Diderot, d'Alembert, d'Albach, Condorcet, are known to have been among the most virtuous of men. Their virtue, then, must have had some other foundation than the love of God. Nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. The people cannot be all, and always, well informed. The part which is wrong will be discontented, in proportion to the importance of the facts they misconceive. If they remain quiet under such misconceptions, it is lethargy, the forerunner of death to the public liberty. What country before ever existed a century and a half without a rebellion? And what country can preserve its liberties if their rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. The remedy is to set them right as to facts, pardon and pacify them. What signify a few lives lost in a century or two? The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure, determined never to be idle. No person will have occasion to complain of the want of time, who never loses any. It is wonderful how much may be done, if we are always doing. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. I hold it that a little rebellion now and then is a good thing, and as necessary in the political world as storms in the physical. Unsuccessful rebellions indeed generally establish the encroachments on the rights of the people which have produced them. An observation of this truth should render honest Republican governors so mild in their punishment of rebellions, as not to discourage them too much. It is a medicine necessary for the sound health of government. I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of the society but the people themselves, and if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of constitutional power. And the day will come when the mystical generation of Jesus, by the Supreme Being as his father in the womb of a virgin will be classed with the fable of the generation of Minerva in the brain of Jupiter. But we may hope that the dawn of reason and freedom of thought in these United States will do away all this artificial scaffolding. I agree with yours of the 22d that a professorship of theology should have no place in our institution. But we cannot always do what is absolutely best, those with whom we act, entertaining different views have the power and the right of carrying them into practice. Truth advances, and error recedes step by step only, and to do to our fellow men the most good in our power, we must lead where we can, follow where we cannot, and still go with them, watching always the favorable moment for helping them to another step. We took the liberty to make some inquiries concerning the ground of their pretensions to make war upon nations who had done them no injury, and observed that we considered all mankind as our friends who had done us no wrong, nor had given us any provocation.